Micah chapter 14. We already discussed verses 1 through 5. I'm going to do a little bit of refreshing. Uh, two things that we learned on the first two uh, verses of Hosea. But uh, before we continue, right, we're going to start with a prayer. Does anybody have any prayer requests? Uh, Angela's mother. Angela, ah, Angela's mother, yeah. She's, mm -hmm. Angela's mother, uh, we need to keep her in prayer. She's, she's really not doing that well. Uh, she cannot stay any longer at the Brookdale. They, they told her that she needs to move out because she needs uh, a 24-7 care of a nurse. They don't provide that. They don't have that. So she moved to a different nurse place, but Sadly, their doctors, they know nothing out they can do with her. So, you know, they're giving pain, medication, everything, and she's in pain. I know she's in pain. So we need to keep her in prayer uh, for the Lord have mercy on her and cure her of her sickness. Um, we hope for the best for her and um, for uh, Angela and Augusto. They're going through a rough time. Justo's father is uh, getting a treatment for cancer too. He's getting uh, chemotherapy. Yes. So um, my stepdad um, went to the doctor this week, and the primary pre uh, pre preliminary diagnosis of what he's has right now is it's called frontal lobe frontal lobe um, uh, dementia. And it is the worst kind of dementia that you can have. It's what Bruce Willis has, where he literally went from within two years becoming where he can't even communicate anymore, can't talk, can't, can't write, can't nothing anymore. Um, uh, it, it is it is truly the the hardest kind of dementia there is, and there is no medication for it. There is no nothing that they can do for it, and it's very aggressive. Um, they are going to be doing some more studies here very shortly to confirm that, that that's what it is. Um, I don't think he understands the the magnitude of it yet, but uh, my mom is is having a hard time with that. So. What's your uncle's name? It's my dad's stepdad. Uh, that, what's yeah. his name? Leland. Leland? Leland. 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 Um, let's go to the Lord and pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for having us here today in your temple. Uh, thank you for uh, having me to teach this class, Lord. It's a honor and pleasure, Lord, to, to be here. Uh, we do ask you, Lord, uh, on this petition for uh, Angela's mother, that you guide her, Lord, and comfort her on her sickness right now with the hard time that she's going through right now, Lord. Bless her and heal her, God, and uh, give you a strength to Angela and Justo, Lord, for the, how, uh, for the time they're going through at this moment, Lord. Guide them and bless them, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, for uh, Brother Kurt's father, Lord, Leyland, that he going through these difficulties of dementia, Lord. There is no medication for him, but you're the only medication that we need, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to bless him, guide him, and heal him, Lord, and save him. Guide me today, Lord, in this uh, study. I know that all week long the enemy has been attacking me const constantly, but I'm here with you, Lord, and I know you're here with me. And you say that when we pray to you in the name of Jesus, you be with us and you guide us. And I do ask you, Lord, to guide me, protect me, and use me as your instrument of communication, Lord, that everything we say here, Lord, is for your glory, Lord that your name be glorified and be exalted today, Lord. Open our mind and our heart, Lord, and give us understanding on the word that you have for us today, Lord, that we keep it in our heart 
And we put it in practice during the week, Lord, to bless you. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that you give us today. And I do ask you, Lord, another thing for, for prayer, Lord, to the nation of Israel, Lord. They're going through a hard time right now in this war against Hamad. We ask you for peace and for their salvation, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, <clears throat> we already studied the first three verses of Hosea. And you know that Hosea is uh, the symbolism of uh, the nation of Israel on how the Lord told Hosea to find uh, a wife, not so blessed wife, a prostitute, where she be very unfaithful to him. And that is to teach the, and show the people of Israel how unfaithful, uh, how much idolatry they have in their heart and not be faithful to the Lord. And that is applied to us too as a church, that we need to be faithful to our Lord because uh, as you know, how the Israelites been uh, taken away temporarily, remember it's temporarily, and it took us and it hurt us in the inheritance of uh, Jesus Christ. And so sadly, for what Israel is going through right now, and one thing that we have to keep in mind that many preachers and many pastors are preaching today about the eschatology on what's going to happen in the future for Israel and for the nation and for the world, including the church. And encourage every one of you and those who are watching in, in, the, uh, in the media and Facebook to stay with Christ and if you are not, repent of your sins and come to Christ. It's important for the church and for the people to stay in Christ as we learn throughout this story of Hosea that repentance brings blessing. But that repentance has to come from our heart, not just only from our lips, and that's it. It had to come from our heart, rooted deep in our heart. And we're going to see that right here now. As you see on chapter, I mean, on verse 5, in chapter 14, verse 5 through 7, how the Lord used this metaphor, this beautiful metaphor, okay? And he used the lily. And it's funny because the lily, during the winter, they stay down on the ground. But on the spring, when it has the, what the, what the Lord calls the, the dew, okay? And it starts coming out, and it comes real fast, real beautiful. But the roots are not so deep, okay? And the same way they die fat. But I, again, he turned to a, the root of the tree of the cypress. That they go really deep on the ground and turn to be, and he used the Lebanon tree too to be a big, huge tree with big shade and everything, you know. And it lasts long. That would be the same thing, for instance, like a... Uh, uh, a new Christian to come to Christ. You know how we are. We we got a lot of blessing, and we're so much enthusiastic to study, to to follow, to follow God. You know, and to keep growing, and we grow fast. But as the time go by, if we don't turn like a cypress tree to God, deep root, that if we don't study and prepare and get ready, we get weak. Like the lily. But if you continue studying the word of God, 
okay? And stay in Christ, you will continue to grow. And you will give it fruit, you will give shade like a Lebanon tree. And that's what we do. But we have to stay in Christ and we have to continue studying and progressing our, in our life through Christ. You see how beautiful that the metaphor is with the lily, the Lebanon tree, the olive tree. You see how the olive has so, so much fruit, beautiful. That's how we are in Christ. And that's what he means when he say in, uh, look at here what he say, okay? In chapter 4, I mean chapter 14, verse 5. We started in verse 5, okay, through 7. I will be like you unto Israel. He should grow like the lily. You see that? Okay. Lilies are beautiful. I love them. Nellie's, uh, Nellie loved them too, and I had a lot of lilies at home. And every spring they come up, and they, they get real beautiful. Okay. Like the lily, and lengthen his root like a Lebanon. You see that? Deep on the ground. So you have to grow deep in your heart. Cry in your heart. Real deep in your heart. Okay. And the branches should spread a beauty that should be look, uh, should be like an olive tree, okay? <coughs> and he fragrance like a Lebanon. Those who dwell on the his shadow shall return. And then <coughs> we see in Daniel chapter four, verse 12. Can you look in there real quick? Daniel chapter four, verse 12. It, 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 the one before uh, Hosea, okay? I'm going to use Brother Kurt. Thank you, Brother, for being so close to me. <laughs> Can you read that one for me, Brother? Absolutely. Its leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it, and the birds of the heavens lived in its branches, and all the flesh was f was fed from it. Wow, you see that? That's how protected we are from the Lord. Yeah. He is that tree. He represents that tree. That we can be under God, be in the shade and the protection under God. You see how beautiful that metaphor is? When you get into it and you see what it means. So <clears throat> there are two things that <clears throat> were directed to this petition, okay? The, the two things that require uh, by our guilt when you come to the Lord. First, is the way how you talk to the Lord, what you say to Him, okay? And this is, this is, uh, It's amazing that sometimes we come in a hurry, inter take our time to be with the Lord, to be in the Spirit. You need to take time to you get to, to you get to that connection. You have to make that connection, Amen. so you can feel it. You are for that repentance. And look at how you say that repentance. Lord, take away all iniquity. You see that? So he can hear you. But if you go <coughs> and pray <coughs> without being in that connection, a spiritual connection with the Lord, usually it just comes from your mouth fast. It's not coming from your heart. And remember, the Lord is looking at the heart. Okay? When you say that prayer, the second thing you have to keep in mind that you ask the Lord to receive that prayer graciously. You see that? Graciously. Be thank you to the Lord. 
be sanctified. Meaning, remember, the Lord doesn't have to forgive you. It's only by His grace, by His mercy. And it's how that connection you have with the Lord when you're in Christ. And sometimes we say, oh, the Lord don't answer me. I pray. I pray every day. I pray. But you don't get that connection, a spiritual connection with the Lord. So think. Take time for the petition, for the prayer. And be thankful to the Lord for so many things that He gives us. So many things. Not just only what you ask. He gives you more than you ask when you have you are in the right connection with the Lord. You render the fruit. And that's what He wants from us. Okay? So it's, it's very important. And look at what happened here to Israel. Okay? Especially to Ephraim. Instead of them turning to the Lord, what they did? They went to Assyria. And depending on the horses, depending on the army. Into of the Lord. And then in verse 4 through 7, the Lord gave them the answer. He asked them, he told them how to pray, okay, and what to say on, on, those, on those verses that, that he gives on uh, verse 1 and 2. To take all the iniquity, to be gracious, giving thanks, okay? And then, another thing that, that, that the Lord, he told them right here at the end of verse 3, for you, <clears throat> for you in the fatherless find mercy. Don't forget about the orphan and the widows. The Lord always asked them to do that to Israel. And that one, one of the things that Israel always forget about the orphans and the widow. Remember in Acts chapter 6, when they would come to Peter to, for the widow, to help for the widow, because they've been, yeah. the widow had not been, taking, not been taken care of. And he selected seven people to, to do that work. So he encouraged the church to do the same. That was part of the church, to look for the well-being of the people's church, okay? The people in the church, those in need. Because a lot of times we help others and we forgot our own. We need to think about our own people in the church, those that are in need, our brothers and sisters in the church, okay? And then in the answer that he gave them, Okay. Yeah, for peace of the prayer and returning Israel, turning to God, okay, and to seek God faith, and they should not seek in vain. When you look at the Lord and you see his faith, you're not doing it in vain. The Lord is looking at you. He will answer you. Okay? Now he assured them that upon their submission, okay, his anger is turned away from them, okay. This is laid at the ground of the other favors he promised. You see that? When you submit to the Lord, and that's what he's trying to say, when you submit to the Lord, that he forget all your iniquity, he take all the things away from you, okay. That set the ground for him to give you his promises of the blessing that you get. You see that? When you get those. And then, <clears throat> it's amazing. Did they pray for taking away the iniquity that they did? Remember, the Lord told them to do that. They see what the Lord told them. Do this, this way. And if you do it this way, I will take a, 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 an equity for you, iniquity. And that's when the Lord starts blessing them. Yes. Kind of reminds me of when um, the Lord asked Moses to take. 
take off his sandals. It was kind of like this this pause of like, wait a second, really think about the presence you're about to come into. You're stepping on holy ground. So right now when you said um, preparing the ground, that's what I thought of. Mm-hmm. The, the, sim- the symbolism behind pause for a moment, really remember where you're coming to. And it kind of reminds me, too, a little bit about how, you know, um, some women do it, some women don't. That's okay, you know. Um, they, they like to cover their head, like just in prayer, mm-hmm. you know, as a symbol of respect towards him. Yes. In their prayer closet or wherever it may be. Um, but, yeah, it's just taking that moment to reflect on who you're coming in front of. And also, even when we pray for our food, I admitted this when I first came to Christ. I used to rush my prayer, brother, you know, to eat, and the Lord convicted me of that. Yes. Pause, really understand what you're saying. Yeah. And sometimes we forget that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we forget where we come from, where we were before, and where we are now. Mm-hmm. And that's why we always have to be thankful to the Lord. Right. Always give you thanks for all the things that He do for us. Mm-hmm. You know. And it's important, sister. Thank you for that. Thank you. Now, they didn't, okay? So, that he, sh- sh- he assured them he will heal the backsliding. So he promised. The backsliding, remember what it was that? The apostasy? They left. They turned back to, to God. They turned it back to them. The Israel turned it back to our Lord Jesus Christ, a God. And he promised them he would take that away from them. Okay? Then, <clears throat> in verse 8, look at what he said to Ephraim. Now he's talking to directly to Ephraim. It could be a personal to Ephraim, or it could be to be the nation of Ephraim, okay? The tribe. Brother, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I just want to make sure we, uh, I didn't want to overlook, um, I wanted to see if you, uh, on, when we look at verse 5, I will be like the dew to Israel, he shall be, he shall blossom like the lily, he shall take root like the trees of Lebanon. I want you to notice there, um, when we look at, like, in hermeneutics, when you look at, at understanding the, the, the interpretation of scripture, notice that when God uses similes, here he shall be like, he shall be like, he shall be like. Always ask yourself, why did God choose that thing? Why did he say she'll be like the dew? Why did he say he shall blossom like the lily? Why not like the flower, sunflower? Why not like, I don't know, the, the rabbits or something, you know? Why did he say he shall take root like the trees, not just trees, the trees of Lebanon? Every one of those there's a, one of the things that's beautiful, especially about the book of Hosea, and really a lot of the Old Testament books, is the poetry. There is a lot of poetic imagery. Amen. For example, Amen. I will be like the Jew to Israel. Well, why do? You'll remember Gideon, whenever God called him yes. as a judge, and he said, you know, Lord, I'm not sure if you're with us. Let me set forth a fleece. And in the morning, if there's dew on it, well, why do? Because dew was seen as the presence of the Lord something Amen. new. Mm-hmm. If you're really with us, let the morning dew be on this fleece. What, what Gideon was saying is, the presence of the morning dew was a presence of, 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 of God. There was a presence there. In other words, he, when you look at his call, he was questioning whether God was again with them. So, in other words, I will be like the dew to Israel. In other words, I will be there with them. A fresh start. A fr- mm-hmm. um, when he says he shall blossom like the lily, well, what did Jesus say? Look at the lilies of the field. They were, they were the iconic image of the beauty of God's creation. In other words, they shall be beautiful once again. Amen. They shall prosper. Do you see? That's why Jesus used the lily. Why did he say he shall take the roots like the trees of Lebanon? Psalm uh, 92, verse 12. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Well, why Lebanon? Because the trees in Lebanon were famous. They were world famous. They were the great trees. They were so famous that they were the trees that King David and King Solomon uh, uh, brought in. They they ordered them specifically to be brought in for the construction of the temple of God. They were were seen as, because they were massive trees. 
so their roots shall be like the like the trees of Lebanon. Well, these roots didn't just go five or six feet deep. They went, they were the deepest the roots deepest known to man at that time. So do you see the beautiful imagery there? Uh, also, not only was the cedar tree known as this, and, and, and when you really look at it, when it talks about uh, the, um, it talks about the fragrance. Well, if you've ever smelled cedar, smell. I love burning cedar. It's got this beautiful um, smell to it. Right now, you don't want to barbecue with it. <laughs> but if you have cedar and you're cooking with it, it's got this beautiful, sweet smell. Yeah, yeah, well, there's right. that sweet aroma. Well, not only that, when you read in Leviticus 14, uh, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leprous person for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall go out of the camp, and the priest shall look. Then if the case of leprous disease is healed in the leprous person, the priest shall command them to take for him who is to be cleansed, two live birds and cedar wood. Cedar had cleansing properties. Mm -hmm. And so it's beautiful when you look in verse 5. God is promising them, I'm going to restore them in a newness like the, the morning dew. I'm going to make them beautiful and shine once again like the flowers of the, li of the, li the lilies of the field. And I shall make them deep-rooted. Their faith, their strength, their conviction shall be brought forth as much so as the great cedars of Lebanon, the same cedars that King Solomon imported to build my own temple. So there's, so it's beautiful when you really look at the Old Testament, how it incorporates this beautiful uh, poetry and imagery. And so whenever you see God say something like, 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 mm -hmm. uh, ask yourself, begin to dig in there. Why did God choose that thing? And you'll find something usually, in fact, all the time, you'll find something really beautiful. So I just wanted to share that real quick. Yeah, yeah, that's good, brother. Thank you, thank you. Uh, going to the same through, okay, in verse 8, you see how the Lord, in verse 5 through 7, he, trying, he identified Israel like a cedar tree, right? To make them grow, like the brothers say, rooted with the root deep in there. Now, okay, now in verse 8, the Lord compared himself to a tree. The same way he, the same way he do with Israel to compare them to a tree, in the same way the Lord now compare himself to a tree. You can see it right there on verse 8 where he say, I am like a green cypress tree, your fruit is found in me. We can see there that Jesus tell us on John 15, when he continuously told us to abide in him, because apart from him you can bear, you can do nothing. This is the same on that. You cannot bear fruit apart from Jesus. Let's go to John 15, 4 and 5. John, the book of John, 15. You want to read it, please? Four and five. Four and five. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he, it is that that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So, the Lord give us all the protections, all the shade, everything that we need from God. Everything. He makes us grow fast like a lily and beautiful. He can root us deep down on the ground like the tree and the Cedar and the Lebanon. I mean, and I see that amazing. Thank you, uh, Brother Herbie. He explained it real good. But that's what the Lord wants for us. He will do that for us as long as we are in Christ 
and we are in his present constant. When we pull away from the Lord, I don't know if it ever happened to you, but it happened to me last time. And yesterday was one of those days when I was helping Nelly to decorate the office, Nelly, uh, Norma's office. Believe me, I wasn't even thinking in the Lord in that moment. I wasn't. Honestly, I wasn't. For some reason, my mind was out. And here I am, fun decorating everything. And suddenly, the staple stopped working. And every time, it broke constantly. I said, what? wait a minute, what happened? I almost got upset, almost. I was close, and then he said, remember, give thanks to the Lord, be gracious. Mm -hmm. And I had to stop, believe me, I had to stop, sit down for a minute, pray and say, Lord, I need you. Forgive me for not being, put everything in you. The enemy is here bothering me. And not let me do the work that I need to do. The first two staples didn't work, and for them, the staples worked really good, and I finished what I was doing. Amen. Thank to my wife that she reminded me to come to the Lord, because I wasn't. Honestly, I wasn't. I was on my own way, my own thinking, you know, and that happened to her a lot of times. <laughs> When we disconnected, then in our mind, and I think the Lord is not there, it happened. That's when the enemy is taking advantage of you. That's when he can attack you, easy. And you just lost it, you just lost it, just like that. So, <clears throat> we need to continue, constantly stay in the Lord. Remember what I told you last week, and I'm gonna repeat it again. When you come to the church, you have to be prepared before you come to the church in the way in, especially the day before on Saturday. Bring everything, all, this, all the things, everything you have, all sinners, everything, repentance, be ready because you're going to come to the presence of the Lord. Amen. And He wants you to come with all your sin washed away. That's what the Lord told Nicodemus. When he said to be born again, to wash away in the Holy Spirit uh, and the Spirit and water, that's what he means. We need to wash away all our things with the Word of God and be in the Spirit. And that's how we need to do right down that room there, out there before you come inside of the church. Because you're going to be on the Lord's presence. You need to remember, keep in mind, that this church is not empty. The Lord is here. Amen. Because he said in his word, where they gather in two or three on my name, and there. And you have to believe that. You have to feel that. And the only way you're going to believe that and feel that, when you prepare yourself to come to the church and listen to the word of God had through the pastor. Remember, the pastor, he's a man like us. But the word is coming from his mouth, it's coming from the Lord. The Lord is using him as an instrument of communication to bring the message to us. And through him, he church will be blessing. And he receive blessing. So we need to change our way of coming to church. We need to start making a difference. Right now, right now, is the time for that. Jesus coming is real close than ever before. And he can come at any time. And he say, watch, stay away. You have to be ready. Because the time that he comes, with the blink of an eye, if he yell not on that spiritual connection with the Lord, I'm sorry, but you stay behind. I don't say that. The word of God say that. Yes. Amen. But you have to be in Christ. So when we come to church, we need to be come to be prepared to listen to the word of God. And whatever we learn from the message that the pastor preached in the church, we need to put it in practice when we move out of here and go home. 
throughout the week. And believe me, when we do that, the Lord will stay with you. Amen. Now, we go to the end of the, of the chapter, right? In verse 9. And like I told you, the, I repeat the two pages, interrupting the one that I need for the study. That's why I could have, that, thank you for you reminding me, brother, for taking care of me, because I had that on my other page, but I repeat the two pages, and the one that I need, I left at home for some reason, I didn't print it. But I'm glad I printed the last verse. Now, on the representative of the ten, of the book of Hosea, okay? The epilogue, epilogue, as you say? Epilogue, epilogue. epilogue. Mm -hmm. It concludes with the prophecy by presenting the reader two way of living. And I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 and 20, and pay attention what the Lord saying on the word. It's very important because this is a two-way that the Lord presented to us through this book of Hosea and that story, okay? This is only not applied to Israel. This is applied to the church. This is applied to us today, okay? So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Brother Curry, I'm going to continue using you, okay? That's okay. <laughs> 19 and 19 and 20 of uh, <coughs> Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter uh, 30, verse 19 and 20. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land of the Lord, swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Amen. Amen. That's the two way of living that the Lord presented to us. You choose. Individually, we choose. And that's why he called the church to be in unity in Christ and do what he asked Israel to do and the fall. He asked us to do it and sadly Most of the churches are failing, and sometimes we're failing, and that's why he called us, like in the book of John, the biggest prophet born for a woman, it was John the Baptist. And the message that John the Baptist has Repentance, because the kingdom of God is near. And the first message that our Lord Jesus Christ gave, repent. That was the first word come out of Jesus. Repent. And he's telling us today, repent and come to him. Israel Eventually, we'll be safe, but they're going to go through a, a really great tribulation. And we had the blessing of our Lord that he chose us, the church. It doesn't mean that you don't go to tribulation. You will have a hard time. You will. You will have some tribulation.
And the Lord tests us. And we go through fire, like gold. The gold go through great heat to lose all the impurities. That would be the same thing with us. So, when you go through the hard times, don't pull away from the Lord. Come to Him. And all those promises that He gave the Israelites, He will do to the church. We will get all those promises. As long we stay in Christ. The sacrifice the Lord did in the cross, right there, with open hand, He asking you to come to Him. So right now, if any of you haven't received Christ yet as our Lord and Savior, I do ask you to come forward and accept Christ. Time is moving fast than ever before. Thing is moving real quick. We don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know. We don't know the time when the Lord is coming. Because he didn't say it himself. He don't know. Could be now, could be tomorrow, maybe 10 years from now, who knows? We don't know. But we have to be ready for it. And he called us to be ready but if you have any sin that you haven't asked for forgiveness, bring it to the Lord. Today is a day. Bring it to Him. Talk to Him. Now is the time. You're here in His presence. He's right here with us. Even when we finish the course and you still have that, talk to Him. Stay in prayer. Stay with the Lord in private on your own. Don't worry about everybody else, whatever people think of. Stay in communication with the Lord. Stay connected with Him. Ask Him for forgiveness. Don't go out of here through those doors back home the same way you came in. Don't. Asking Him to take all those iniquity away from you, all the things. Ask Him to clean your heart. And thank Him for it. Be thankful for it. So you can be in His grace. Father, thank you, Lord, for the message that you have today to our church, Lord. Lord, we ask you today to forgive anything that we have, Lord, that we haven't forgotten, that we don't remember, is deep in in our mind or on our heart, Lord, that we don't remember. For you know everything, Lord. You know every every secret that we have, Lord. I do ask you, Lord, please, wash me. Take it away, Lord. And bless me with your spirit, Lord. Don't let me walk out of here the same way I came here, Lord. Cleanse me. Wash me, Lord. Thank you, God, for all the things that you have given us, Lord. And I ask you, oh Lord, all the things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, brother.